comprehensive news because in today's world, you need more than just sound bites. TSPN, streaming on the World Wide Web and on demand at tspntv.com. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. Today, our interview is going to be with uh, Sherry Curtis. How are you doing, Sherry? Hi. I'm okay, fine, I'm trying to get all these names straight. You know, uh, yeah. names are hard with me. I'm not quite sure why I know who people are in that. And, uh, uh, and you're Sherry Curtis, yes. and you are now the chairperson of the Upcountry Community Council. Yes. Okay. And uh, the Upcountry Community Council, that's been in existence for approximately how long? Since uh, 2005, 2006. What brought the uh, community council uh, online? Were you around at that time? Yes, I was. What was the impetus to start the council? Well, the areas that we live in, we felt that we needed a, a place that we could come to to hear what the county is doing upcountry and what we wanted to know what we could do to help improve our lifestyle upcountry. Okay, and the first... Uh, President or not president, president chairman chairman, chairman uh, was Debbie Dunn, right? Yes. And uh, we know Debbie, and I think uh, I think it was the idea was upcountry. It's hard for the upcountry residents to come down to uh, the, the um, board of board supervisors. Meetings. Yes, since we are county upcountry, we're not a city. We go down, and it's quite a ways down for a lot of senior citizens who live up there. It's difficult, and especially with the economy the way it's been going, the gas costs have been tremendous. So trying to get them aware of where our tax dollars are going and what they're being spent on and what we need upcountry is part of the reason that Ted Novelli had helped form okay. the council in the very beginning. And it was to have him hear what our concerns were, and we wanted to hear what the county was doing. Was this modeled off of the Pine Grove Community Council? It, I think, began with that thought in mind. Okay. And, and uh, it's been going monthly ever since? Yes. Okay. And uh, let's see, so Debbie Dunn served for two years. What were some of the first concerns? The first concerns were, the main one was fire. Okay. The other one was uh, Highway 88 Safety okay. Committee and water okay. because we live in a very high, severe fire zone okay. area. So fire was really big. And then we needed water to put okay. out fires. It sounds to me, or it would seem to me, that your concerns mm -hmm. that are ongoing, they're still there. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, with the, uh, with the uh, moving of the, uh, uh, the water... Mm -hmm. And the uh, gravity feed line, the mm -hmm. uh, GSL, GSL. Mm -hmm. has that uh, alleviated some of the concerns up in the upcountry? We'll feel better when it finally gets built. We've okay. worked a long time and trying to get it put before the water board and also the board of supervisors to have them understand that if you go to a fire hydrant, you'd like to have water there to help put out a fire, whether it's in a home or whether it's in the forest. Okay. Now, I believe you're a quasi-governmental agency? Yes. What does that mean? That means we only have the right to voice our opinion in regards to certain things that are happening within the county and our area to the Board of Supervisors. We don't command any uh, arbitrary vote or anything. We just wish to let them know what our concerns with are up country. Okay, lately in the news, since I've been doing the news, uh, it uh, seems that when uh, quite often uh, Ted Novelli is at your meetings, is, uh, is that Yes, correct? we have on our agenda regular uh, people from the county to update us on what's going on in their department and their areas. So he usually gives an update on what's going on in, that, on in his agenda. district? Yes. Okay, and takes your listens to you while he's there? Yes. Okay. So I imagine that's why uh, Ted uh, approves of the uh, of the uh, yes council. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, you 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 were the vice chair. Mm -hmm. Did you ever uh, run the meeting as vice chair? Yes. Okay. I've had experience doing that a couple of times. 
All right. And so uh, now you took over. When was when when were you elected? Was it the in November? November. Or? Okay. To be starting in January. Okay. So you have had no meetings. Have you had a meeting? Not yet. yet. It's okay. coming so next it's coming Monday. Up. Next Monday night, six o'clock at the Veterans Hall, and all who live in um, that area up there, which is Tedna Valley's district, are welcome to come, and anybody else who's interested in what's going on up country are welcome as well. Okay, uh, how's the membership? How's the membership been? Is it, is it constant? About how many members? We've gone show? up and down. Well, let me ask you this: I think you mm -hmm. have been, but have you been? Uh, there since the beginning of its inception yes. in 2006? Yes, I have been. Okay. And but in the first two years, did you have any uh, uh, official roles? Yes, I was chairman of the Highway 88 Safety Committee. Okay. And that's still a great concern, yes. right? Yes, we okay. have issues up there. All right. Uh, coming up on the agenda, what, uh, what might you be talking about? Coming up on this meeting, we will be discussing the Highway 88 Safety Corridor okay. right. project. There's been concerns that they may be revisiting this, and we want to make sure that we understand what their concerns are as well as let them know what ours are. That it's about time that they come to the plate and do what they need to do to have a safety area for children, vehicles, and business patrons trying to cross the street back and forth during the Pine Grove when I guess school lets out and you know comes right. when everybody is trying to take their kids to school we have buses and parents who are driving it's kind of congested so they're trying to alleviate that okay we're gonna take a break and when we come back we'll uh, talk more about the highway 88 safety project and other things with uh, Sherry Curtis. Stay with us right here on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. Tom Slavik with Sherry Curtis, the Upcountry Community Council Chairwoman, and uh, just newly elected, but he's been with the Upcountry Community Council from its inception of back in 2006. Sounded to me like we were going over and uh, the concerns that uh, that the upcountry had then, they have now, and they'll probably almost always continue to have the, the fire uh, safety and mm -hmm. be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. uh, water might get much better and uh, less of an issue after the uh, GSL. GSL is completed, mm -hmm. you feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was our other concern that you had? The other concerns are for the transportation project okay. in Pine Grove that it gets finished too because it's been going for a long time and they finally agreed on what could be done with what money that there was available. At this point it's kind of scary because now they want to reconsider if they should do the Pine Grove project up country and the business council raised a letter and stating that they didn't think that there was going to be any more economic development or business growth up country and so the money might be better visited down in the other parts of the county so okay. we feel that the business community up council deserve to have a safe environment for their business patrons to be able to get to their businesses cross the highway as well as providing a decent crosswalk that where you could cross the highway like other areas have and we're not getting that cooperation at this point they are doing it piecemeal and we're saying how long do we wait before somebody has to be killed before again before we get something done you know yesterday when we had talked and I had uh, said that uh, I had concerns as well from uh, from reading the news reports and I had talked with uh, with uh, here uh, Neil Peacock and Neil mm -hmm. Peacock to me from my interview uh, mm -hmm. seemed to me like they were continuing to move forward with the planning phase and mm -hmm. then they would possibly be looking at uh, more. I had asked you to, to uh, watch that report. Did, what, what did you feel you took from that report? I got kind of nervous because we agree that we should look at any action of government to see if it's performance-based budgeting and they're doing the best they can with what money that they do have. And 
we feel at this point, since it's been studied so much and agreed upon over and over again, that Pine Grove was going to be able to get not all the money, but the majority of the money to finish the project. You know, I always find, uh, and I've talked with uh, Neil Peacock and uh, others, but it's, and, uh, you know, I live in Pine Grove, so I have been to a lot of the meetings, especially mm -hmm. early on meetings when I moved here and after that. It seems to me like almost every time you go to a meeting, you start from square one. Mm -hmm. Does it seem like that to you? Yes, we kind of think it's a waste of money and time of the people who have been faithfully going giving their opinions on what they thought would be best for Pine Grove. But it's not just Pine Grove people, it's also Pioneer people, West Point people come through that corridor. There's an awful lot of people who live up here that have to go through there that don't ra actually live in Pine Grove. I believe also that um, the project is designed to help in future years out. In other words, it's basically being built for maybe 2030. They always plan. <laughs> for 2030s because it takes them that long to get any planning done. I don't know. I think our government is getting too burgeoned with uh, bureaucratic paperwork. I mean, if you ever go to a meeting, you should see the packets, how thick they are. And they are producing lots and lots of paper, but very, it takes a long time to get anything done. Okay, did the, uh, the business council, um seemingly get into this uh, Highway 88 safety process yes. late in the game? Yes, after the uh, Transportation Commission had voted to proceed with the Pine Grove project, they sent a letter in stating that they thought that business development and economic development was not going to be continuing upcountry anymore, that it was basically going to go to the other parts, the west side of the county and that we need to revisit this project and the monies that were going to be expended there to see if it's prudent. Okay, now would you believe we're run out of time? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. I would have thought you said no, but it flies, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Okay, people are interested in this and more, and also I, there was a, uh, something that came up and we didn't get a chance to discuss it, I'm sorry, but that was the sales, uh, uh, what do you they, have? Transportation sales tax? Yes. And this was brought up by who? The Business Council, Bill Conklin, saying that they were proud to announce that they were going to create an initiative to get it going, to put it where on the ballot. Where can people find out something about this? Well, I don't know how much they've done, but you, they could probably talk to the Business Council about it. Do you think that might come up? Tomorrow? Is, is, I mean, your meeting isn't tomorrow. Give the correct date of your meeting and uh, we'll let you go. It's Monday, January 13, okay. 6 o'clock at the Veterans Hall on Buckhorn Ridge Road in Pioneer. Okay, Sherry, thank you for coming by and uh, thank you. thanks for watching TSPN. Sorry we're out of time. Catch us again next time on TSPN's News. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN.